IBA at Winchester, engineering announcements for the radio and television trade. Welcome to our regular Tuesday Bulletin of Engineering Announcements for the Radio and Television Trade. The possibilities of extra capacity for Oracle Teletext. We look at what's behind the special tests we're doing at the moment and the implications for the trade. In transmitter news, the arrival of independent local radio at Rygate and Crawley, new additions to the Channel 4 network, the weekly summary of special announcements and full details of three new television relays. Piddle Trentide and Winterbourne Steepleton near Dorchester in Dorset and Dronfield just north of Chesterfield in Derbyshire. Since the 1st of October we've been looking at the feasibility of using more than six lines per field of teletext data. We've actually been radiating extra non-decodable lines in central southern England and in London. Now the majority of viewers simply don't see or hear any ill effects. Indeed, the 1976 teletext specification suggested, even then, that it was possible to use lines 7 to 22 inclusive. The trouble is, sets designed without allowing for the presence of teletext data are prone to visible flyback problems, causing previously blank lines to be clearly visible over the normal picture. When Oracle started full service in 1975, only two lines per field were used, with no great problems. In 1981 we increased this to four lines, and then this year we reached six lines per field. We carried out extensive tests last year to see if those six lines would cause flyback problems on old receivers. Modifications were available for the relatively few sets which were affected, and we went ahead with six lines per field on ITV, and soon after on Channel 4 as well. For a significant increase in the data capacity or access time, we would now have to move towards using 12 lines per field. And it was between the 1st and 5th of October during daytime that we actually tried this out on ITV only from Crystal Palace, Rowridge, Hannington and Midhurst, together with their dependent relays. Once again we notified the trade beforehand, sending prepaid reply cards to nearly 7,000 dealers in the relevant areas. But to make the analysis valid, we didn't want to make general announcements to the public in case other sorts of reception problems were wrongly blamed on the extra teletext lines. In the event, we received rather more complaints than we'd expected, and on the 5th of October, we dropped back to eight lines per field. The tests continue for the time being, but later we're planning to see if reduced sound power aggravates any potential audio problems. We'd like to stress that these tests are unlikely to affect modern receivers. Any problems will be on older, non-teletext sets, such as the well-known 3000 and 3500 chassis, and also the G8. There are modifications available, but reports vary as to how successful they are. We're keeping all these tests fairly flexible, so that we can respond to the feedback we get from dealers. And for this reason, the current situation is best obtained from our Oracle page 390. Remember that it's only in the London and TVS South areas for the moment. Transmitter news next, starting with Channel 4 conversions at existing relays. The new channel arrived at four more stations last week. Guildford in Surrey on Channel 50, Grantown in the Highland District of Scotland on Channel 47, Langholm in the Borders on Channel 53, and Armagh in Northern Ireland on Channel 42. Due this week, Millam Park in Cumbria, where about 8,000 people are awaiting the new service on Channel 32. And Kingsbridge in Devon, where Channel 4 will be on 50 for about 2,500 people. Due later next week is Dartmouth, also in Devon, and here the new service will be on 47, again for about 2,500 people. Special Announcements 
and work is progressing at Durris with installation of the new transmitting aerial. Reduced power and occasional interruptions are to continue until about late autumn. Today in North Wales, Moley Park was scheduled off the air from 9.30 until about midday for a change of mast lights. In Dorset, Winterbourne Stickland is also off this morning from 10 until about noon. This is for aerial work. In North Devon, Ilfra Coombe was expected to be off this morning from dawn to allow for aerial maintenance. All services due back by about midday. Tomorrow, Channel 4 from Emily Moore will be off between 8.30 and midday. And also tomorrow morning in North Wales, Arfon is due to be interrupted between about 9.30 and 12.15 for final checks following a major period of aerial maintenance. The interruption will also affect Weinvower, Thlandequin, Festiniog and Thlanengen. On Thursday, Sandy Heath Channel 4 will be off the air between 8am and noon. Also on Thursday, both Penderin and Mertha Tidva will be off for electricity board maintenance between 9am and 3.30pm. New relays now, and in Dorset, near Dorchester, the Piddle Trentide station is due on the air later this week. It's designed to provide UHF signals for about 900 people living along the valley from about Alton Pancras in the north to Piddle Hinton in the south, including Piddle Trentide itself and White Lackington. Regional ITV programmes will be from TBS on Channel 49, with Channel 4 on 42, so it's Group B aerials mounted so that the elements are vertical. That's Piddle Trentide near Dorchester, due on the air in a few days' time. Also nearing completion is the relay at Winterbourne Steepleton, just west of Dorchester. Again, about 900 people are to benefit, living in the village itself and also in Winterbourne Abbas and Martinstown. TVS and TVAM will provide the ITV programmes on Channel 45, with Channel 4 on the much higher frequency of Channel 66. This means that Group E or wide band aerials will be needed for optimum reception on all four channels. Polarisation is to be vertical. That's Winterbourne Steepleton due on the air later this week. The same is true of Dronfield just north of Chesterfield in Derbyshire. Here about 750 people should soon find a better signal in a compact area to the southeast of Dronfield, bordering on Frith Wood. Yorkshire Television will provide the regional ITV service on channel 59, with channel 4 on 65. Aerial should be group CD, but note its horizontal polarisation in this case. Dronfield is due to start transmissions later this week. Finally, the 49th independent local radio station, Radio Mercury, is due to launch its first programmes this coming Saturday. Trade tests are already well underway. Serving the Rygate, Crawley, Dorking and Horsham area, VHF transmissions in stereo are on 103.6 MHz. Daytime medium wave coverage extends to include Caterham and East Grinstead on a frequency of 1521 kHz, that's 197 metres. Radio Mercury opens this Saturday, the 20th of October. Well, that's all for this week. And we leave you with details of how to contact us with any queries about independent television or local radio. Engineering Information Service, Independent Broadcasting Authority, Crawley Court, Winchester, Hampshire. SO 21 QA. The telephone number is Winchester, that's 0962 822 444. In the London area, you can ring our Brompton Road number, that's 584 7011. But do ask for engineering information. We'll be back on the air next Tuesday at 9.15 and 12.15 on Channel 4 and S4C. In the meantime, you can find us on Oracle pages 390 and 590, where there's updated information on all our services. So from John Novel and myself, Janet Smythe, goodbye for now.